All right, so Kaladesh Remastered and Amonkhet Remastered are coming back to Arena pretty soon here, starting tomorrow with Kaladesh, and then in five days for Amonkhet. Wanted to do a quick draft refresher on how to win, how to get seven wins in these best of one drafts. These are both remastered uh, sets, and they're they're kind of high power level compared to a normal set or how they were at launch, and they're pretty tricky. So I just wanted to go over some of the major themes and archetypes. And give you all a quick refresher. So in the draft for Kaladesh, we're starting off with finding value. Uh, when Wizards remastered these sets, they tended to bring back more of the synergistic, more powerful cards. So you're able to get a lot of two-for-ones. And that's certainly the case in Kaladesh. Cards like Cloud Blazer or uh, Aether Swooper can get you a little token are good ways to go. The other major theme in this is energy. In, in the set, and that is huge. If you can get an energy deck going, there's lots of different ways to use it, whether it's buffing your own creatures and getting in there, or whether it's making little tokens or drawing cards. There's just tons of ways to synergize with energy. You just wanna make sure you're able to get a critical mass of energy producers. And there's other ways to go if, you, if you're not in an energy deck that we'll talk about, but energy is another thing you wanna be on the lookout for, and usually if you're going in, you're going in deep. Last up, Synergy. Like I said, these, this, this is a very synergistic set, uh, whether it's uh, making servos going wide, energy, or just beat down and putting counters on your stuff. Usually you want a really solid game plan. Up next, some of the different build arounds. Like I said, Energy, Aether Swooper, in my opinion, best common in Kaladesh Remastered. Comes out on turn two. It's evasive and you can start creating little servos and poking in there and creating energy. So pick these up early, pick them up often, build up your energy if you're going to go there. Next up uh, is going to be some payoffs, right? Uh, an example is Era of Innervation. This is more for that dirtily value-based energy deck, but it can pull you way ahead and get you a ton of energy every time you get an artifact or an artificer. There's a lot of artificers in the set. You're going to get a bunch of energy, uh, and then you can sack it uh, cash it in to draw three cards up next th this is an artifact themed set as well so cards like cog workers puzzle knots there's implements of whatever malice or whatever they're called but there's tons of artifacts vehicles prophetic prism is in the set and there's one really good payoff and game finisher if you're in the deck at common and that's gear seeker serpent these end a lot of games it's huge it's massive you can cast it for cheap if you're going deep in artifacts and then it can just win the game late game when you stall out the ground with your servos or whatever next up we have another popular builder and it's going to be the fabricate go wide deck this is primarily in white but you can also uh, uh bring in green even black has some fabricate cards as well uh, but white is definitely the way to go if you're looking to do a fabricate go wide deck you get cards like propeller pioneer there's uh, a 2-2 two -two that has fabricate one for three and then you finish your opponent off with either an inspired charged or a dawn feather eagle so uh, there's lots of different ways to go Lots of different build arounds at common. Of course, there's busted rares and things like that you can build around as well. Um, up next, top commons, I think, in the set. First up, I said I talked about Aether Swooper. It's good to get on board early. You don't want your opponent attacking in and getting value from their energy producers and getting counters on their things. So you want to be able to be proactive and get a two drop in there. Up next, Aether Chaser as well. Another two drop energy producer. The first strike matters, especially in a set with a ton of these little servos running around, so it can kill off the servos, uh, and, and the one toughness doesn't uh, doesn't ruin the card, right? So it's not going to trade off for a servo, it's just going to kill it. So Aether Chaser also can get in there on turn two and make a servo. It's very tough to block a two-power first strike creature that early. Last up, I have Thriving Rhino, another super solid common here. Uh, this is more on the beatdown plan, using energy for beatdown counters, making your creatures bigger. It's a 2-3 three for 3, which isn't great, but you get 2 energy, and the first time it attacks, it becomes a 3-4 three, for 3. And if you have other ways to produce energy, this thing can just grow and get out of control. So really like Thriving Rhino in the beatdown plan as well. General um, color ranking here. Again, I think everything is open. Blue-black is probably the deck that I wouldn't want to be, uh, but everything is viable in this format. I like to start out red. It's aggressive. There's cheap threats. It's got great removal. And then it goes into every deck. Black, uh, 
Black, I think, is the weakest color, but it goes well into the red-black deck. The red-white deck is really strong. Red, blue, red, green, they're all really strong decks, so I think red's a good place to start. Up next, I have green, and that's because it kind of plays in both worlds there. It has really good energy producers, really good uh, counters uh, for plus one, plus one counters decks, and then it also is uh, amazing at beatdown. Really, really strong beatdown color. Up next, we have white, and that's for that fabricate strategy. They can uh, White can really gum up the ground, and then it has evasive creatures to go over the top. Uh, it also has cards that we talked about, like Dawnfeather Eagle and Inspired Charge, to really uh, uh, push yourself over the edge, make one big swing, and kill your opponent. Next up, we have blue, eight, yeah, held on by the strength of Aether Swooper. It has evasive threats like Gear Seeker Serpent as well, uh, but it is kind of thin at common. Uh, it goes, it pairs really well, I think, with green and with white and with red. Um, uh, and it, it's more of a support color in those, but it does produce energy really, really well. Last up, we have black. Good removal, but it's not good at attacking. And this uh, format, like Amonkhet, is fairly proactive. You want to be able to get on board. You want to be able to start hitting your opponent and getting value from your energy. All right, so plan A in the draft is beatdown. This is where you want to start um, in Kaladesh. Cards like Aether Chaser. Uh, in plan A with Beatdown, you're using your energy for damage. Cards like Riparian Tiger, Thriving Rhino that we talked about, to pump your creatures, get them through, and make blocking very difficult for your opponent uh, and just killing them, right? Very simple strategy. And then staying ahead, Ridge Scale Tusker is probably the mythic uncommon of the set. Super strong. It's a 5-5 five, five for 5 that puts counters on all your creatures. So if you can go wide, this thing's just going to punch in for a lot of damage with your team. Uh, and it's super strong. First pickable for sure over a lot of the rares, I would say. So that's going to be plan A, is you're going to want to be in either red or green and plan to beat down. So I think the best color is red, pairing red. So what are we going to do? So in white, we're going to talk about uh, how we pair red in white. We're going to talk about uh, inspired charge, uh, using cards like salivating gremlins to get in you know you're making a lot of servos and fabricating uh and this can be a four three trampler uh very aggressive pairing in white red that usually goes over the top with an inspired charge and then pairing blue aether swooper we talked about it a lot this is going to be an evasive deck built on creating energy creating servos and creating thopters and then getting in on your opponent in the air while gumming up the ground uh, using a lot of spells and removal, tempo, tricks in order to beat your opponent. But also a very strong deck. And last up we have black. We will talk about red-green as well, but I want to talk about black here. This is uh, kind of the, uh, there's a minor little uh, vehicles theme. Um, and then there's an artifacts theme in this one as well. So we'll talk about that. All right, first up, fabricate. Uh, there's a minor pilot theme here. Um, it uses Fabricate and Pump to finish off opponents. What I mean by Pilot is that they, this goes well with vehicles, like Renegade Wheelsmith. There's a lot of strong vehicles in this format. Uh, there's one in particular at Uncommon, which is really, really strong. Like Renegade Freighter, it's like a 4-3 Trampler Crew 1. Um, and then whenever it attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So it's super strong. Uh, so there is a minor Pilot theme that you can use. But you're not really dependent on these pilots are using fabricate like glint sleeve artisan and battlefield pump to finish off your opponents very aggressive deck uh, untethered express is what i was looking for yep super strong vehicle next up is tokens and evasion so this is blue red so you're using energy to create thopters to create tokens and then you're overwhelming your opponents in the air with unblockable creatures or creatures like gear seeker serpent so they have a, this is buoyed by a couple of very powerful uncommons uh, maverick thopterist which is a 2-2 improvise improvise where you can uh, tap artifacts to reduce the casting cost of the card and then it creates two one one artifact creature tokens with flying when it etbs uh, Gear Seeker Serpent, which we talked about, another evasive threat. If you're building a bunch of servos and Thopter tokens, this thing's going to be super cheap. And then Whirler Virtuoso is another mythic uncommon in this set. It might even be better than Ridge Scale Tusker, but I wouldn't pack one, pick one over it uh, because it's two colors as opposed to the one color. But this, if you can make the energy, you're just going to create an infinite amount of little Thopter tokens to kill your opponent with. Lastly, before we talk about green and how to pair green, is going to be the Artifact Enters the Battlefield Red-Black deck. I do think this uh, deck is pretty good. Uh, there's another minor little pilot theme. It's more on when your creatures become tapped. 
Uh, so when they tap to be to crew a vehicle, they deal damage. Uh, there's a, a one drop nightmark kit lookout in black that drains your opponent when it becomes tapped. Um, and then it pings with cheap artifacts, uh, with fabricators to gum up the ground and deal incidental damage to, to your opponent. So a card like Weldfast Engineer is going to allow your servos to attack as three ones, which is really, really strong. And it's a three, three th for three, which is a decent body in its own right for black red. So uh, this can help you get in and eventually your, your servos are going to start trading up. And if you're able to make any thopters, even better. Uh, it's also really, really strong removal package here. So three mana. Instant speed, destroy a creature. And then if you have an artifact, again, you're going to deal that incidental damage to your opponent. It uh, lightning bolts their face, or lava spikes their face, too. Also, we have underhanded design. design. So this is a really cool build around that I like a lot. Um, it's two mana. Whenever an artifact, a servo, a token, whatever, comes in, into play, you're going to drain your opponent. And then you can sack it just to blow up a creature. Super strong. Uh, great build around. Uh, with the red-black deck, I'd want to be I want to be built more around uncommons, and I want to make sure that those uncommons are coming to me before I get into this one. But if you can get there, it can be very very strong. All right, pairing green, we're going to talk through red, which is just beat down. It's just straight up beat down with cards like Voltaic Brawler, Long Tusk Cub is a super strong uncommon in this format. Uh, pairing green with with blue, this is going to be the big time energy deck, which is a lot of fun. One of my favorites to draft. Uh, so you're just going to create a ton of energy and use it for, for value, for card draw and what have you. And then lastly, green and black is going to be the counters deck. And this deck only really comes together if you can get winding constrictors. Uh, and a lot of them, I think. Well, not a lot of them. You'll need at least, at least one, but uh, preferably two to make this work. Counters are pretty finicky, but if you can get it to work, it's a lot of fun. All right. And then green-white is also pretty good too, but... Um, if, if you can do the go wide thing, it's a little bit tougher, I think, in this in this format. All right, so beat down uh, with red green. You just play your big threats, use energies to put counters on them or to buff them, and then you kill your opponent. Cards like Monstrous Onslaught uh, can just battlefield wipe your opponent, right? You attack with your 4-4, four, four, you pump it to a 6-6, six, six, uh, your opponent takes it, and then you blow up the whole battlefield with it or whatever. You know, this thing can kill... Um, half your opponent can kill all your opponent's servos to enable an attack can kill all their creatures i mean you're gonna have bigger creatures than your opponent you're gonna find a way to use this one thing to note it is pretty expensive i usually don't want more than one of these in my deck because sometimes you just don't have um a big creature in play and you need to use it scrapper champion this thing is also quite strong um as you can see anything with double strike that can pump itself is very good but this thing can get out of control very quickly of course and then we already talked about Thriving Rhino, but again, at common, this is going to be the card that you're really, really looking for in the red-green beatdown deck. Up next, we have All-In Energy. This is the deck that can splash. Usually, I don't like to splash too much in this format. Uh, it does have Prophetic Prism, which helps to splash, but uh, it, it's pretty quick, pretty proactive, and the cards are synergistic enough that I don't feel the need to splash a lot, but you can in, in blue-green energy. This one is going to use energy to get value, and your goal is just to survive until you can turn the corner. So cards like Attune with Aether are going to help you splash. They're going to add to your energy, um, and you can play it on turn one. Uh, Shielded Aether Thief is going to give you some value. It's a two-mana flash creature, so it's going to come into play, block something, save some damage, and sometimes you're going to have enough energy where you're going to use its ability to draw a card at instant speed as well. This thing is also a lightning rod for removal, so just keep that in mind. Lastly, Servant of the Conduit. This is another thing that's going to help you splash, and it's going to help you get some energy. Plus, it's just a 2-2 two, two for 2, so you can trade it off, get your energy, get your value from that, and that's just fine too. Lastly, we have the counters strategy. This depends on signpost uncommons, and you need the snake, all right? And you also need this to be open. Um... People are unnaturally drawn to this deck, I feel, so it is a little bit overdrafted, but if you can find an open lane, it is a lot of fun to play. So we talked about the snake before, which um, adds counters, extra counters onto your stuff whenever a counter is put on it. Uh, and then you have a battlefield wipe like hazardous conditions to help finish off your opponent. So if all your creatures got counters on them, uh, it's just a one-sided minus two, minus two to your opponent's team, and then you can get in there. It also kills all the servos and stuff like that and thopters on the battlefield as well. 
Cards like Defiant Salvager. So if you're making servos, you can uh, pump this thing way up there. If your opponent doesn't have an answer for it, it just becomes kind of out of control as well. And then Armorcraft Judge is a big payoff. This is to help you get ahead on cards. So if you have a wide battlefield, everything, you know, you play your, your ridge uh, scale Tusker, your battlefield has a bunch of plus one, plus one counters on it. You can just draw a ton of cards with Armorcraft Judge. This is the deck that I like uh, Armorcraft Judge in the most. Um, I think the red green deck, you usually want to be beating down. You're not going to need as much of the value. You have big uh, expensive creatures to play, so you're using your mana. But I think in the green black deck, this card is, is quite good. All right. Plan B. So let's say you can't do the beatdown thing. What do you do? You focus on your two for ones. Cards like Vengeful Rebel. Revolt is pretty difficult to trigger, but if you can build a deck around it, uh, you can make it work. Okay. And Vengeful Rebel is just a straight up two for one. If you can get it going, it is a little bit finicky, but that's what you're going to want to focus on if you can't do the beatdown thing. Or if you can't get into uh, green and do the value thing. Evasion. This is a very evasive set that. Uh, evasive dependent set because the ground gets gummed up by all the servos all the little one one tokens running around so you want to be evasive so a card like Aero airdrop aeronauts swings in for four damage in the air can and then it can also help win the race by gaining five life if you can able revolt and then other synergies blue black again is not the deck i would choose to be in if i had a choice but if you get a synergistic deck in blue black you can make it work every deck is viable as long as you're really synergistic and you're focused on your game plan what else happens in the set so uh vehicles this is a vehicle theme set we kind of talked about it sky skiff is fine if you're in uh, a deck with pilots if you have a bunch of tokens uh, i wouldn't put this in my red green decks necessarily because you're not going to have that crew one a lot of the time and you don't want to be crewing something uh, that is useful on the battlefield this usually just chips in the chief if you're going for an artifacts strategy and there's a lot of artifacts in this set this is also an artifact themed set chief can really push you over the top it makes all your tokens your servos your thopters into two twos and a bunch of artifact creatures and vehicles as we've seen in the set as well and lastly the goggles the goggles do something let me tell you there's a lot of artificers in this set a lot of the like aether super aether chaser aether poisoner there's just a ton of them there's a lot in white as well so this card can really get in there it's one to play so you can play this on turn one you play your artificer on turn two that's say your aether super now you have a two four flyer on turn two um every time an artificer comes into play so you can swing in with your artificer if you play another one you can automatically attach the goggles to it and have a good defender as well so i like this card quite a bit if i have probably i would say five or more artificers so in summation kaladesh is a fast set um you want to be proactive you want to get on board uh, and you want to have a game plan it's a fun set it's it's kind of difficult and intimidating to draft when you first uh when you see your first pack because there's a lot of directions you can go in i would say you're going to want to lean towards red if you can if all other things are equal you want to lean towards the beatdown plan but again if you open a sweet rare go for it every deck is viable all right after kaladesh we're going to get into amonkhet so i love this set uh also very very aggressive but this is coming out uh, five days after Kaladesh launches tomorrow, and that'll take us to Dominaria United. So I wanted to go through Amonkhet. So in the draft, this is going to be built around, this set is, is more Amonkhet than Aurora of Devastation. The remastered version, they kind of shoved those two sets together, but it's still kind of built around that aggro exert plan. Amonkhet famously being one of the most aggressive sets ever made. That uh, This and Zendikar, I think, are up there. Uh, Ixalan is up there as well. Uh, so it's uh, in the draft, you want to start by thinking you're an aggro exert deck. Uh, white and red usually do that the best. The other thing you're going to want to know is there are a ton of sweepers. I think there's eight, maybe nine sweepers at rare in this set. So despite it being a very aggressive set, you can't really play around the sweepers if your plan is to be aggressive. You just got to kind of go for it. And if your opponent has it, they have it. If you open a sweeper, it really opens the door for you to build a control deck uh, because you can sweep your opponent's board and hopefully stabilize that way. Um, so, But 
it's definitely something you're going to want to think about. There are a ton of sweepers in this format. Last up, one toughness hate. So, just again, despite it being an aggressive set, there's a lot of two ones in this format that are good. And you're going to think they're good, and you're going to want to take them. Just be wary. Now, I'm not saying don't play one toughness creatures, but there's a lot of things in this set, like Splendid Agony, that can blow you out if you have a bunch of one toughness creatures. There's there's a pinger in this set called Fervent Paincaster. There's Blur of Blades that puts a one, minus one, minus one counter. There's whole uh, archetype in green-black that's built around uh, minus one, minus one counters. So, just got to be aware of the one toughness hate in this format. And it's usually better if you have a 3-1 or a 2-2 you're deciding between, you might wanna take the 2-2. All right, build arounds. So my favorite deck in this format is gonna be the cycling deck, but I wouldn't really wanna get into it unless I had a really good build around. So there's a few, Drake Haven being one of my favorites. There's also, I think it's called Abandoned Sarcophagus where you can cast cycling cards from your graveyard. And then there's cards, of course, like Archfiend, which is just a busted rare. Um, but you're going to want to uh, build around cycling if you get some of these enablers, and you'll know if the deck's open. Next up, oh, there's the Archfiend right there. What a busted card. One of the biggest bombs in the set. There are quite a few bombs in this set, though. Uh, up next is the Cartouche and Trials strategy. Cartouche, uh, these things look unassuming, but they're actually very, very strong in this format. Um, they give you value and they go well with Trials. Trial of Solidarity being the mythic uncommon of this set. Every time uh, you cast a Cartouche, you can return the Trial back to your hand and recast it. So Trial of Solidarity is a battlefield buff, plus two, plus one, and Vigilance. Vigilance is very important because with Exert, your creatures don't untap during their next untap step when you exert them. So this is a free Exert for all of your creatures and battlefield buff. Uh, Trial of Solidarity, the number one uncommon in this set, in my opinion. Uh, you first picked that over a lot of rares. Maybe even Archfiend. I don't know. Maybe I don't go that deep just because I love the cycling deck. But uh, Trial of Solidarity oh. is super strong. And then once you get a trial, you want to get a bunch of cartouches so you can try to recast that trial. Last up are the bombs. Approach of the Second Sun. This is where it started. Uh, you can build a control deck around this thing. You can splash in blue-green in this format uh, as long as you can survive. But try uh, cards like... Um, uh, approach of the second sun are just incredibly strong uh scarab god things like that there's there's some definite bombs that you can build around but again default plan start aggro top comments uh this is a very graveyard themed set there's cards with embalm and eternalize that come back from the yard all the gods you can't get rid of so magma spray is very cheap removal instant speed you can use it in response to an exert trigger uh there's some decent tricks in this format in response to trial of solidarity to thin your opponent's board and then it exiles the creature so they can't get it back so probably my top common is going to be magma spray up next this was tough for me uh the best common in white i think is going to be gust walker uh to start uh fan bearer is a one drop one two tapper that's also quite good but gust walker is going to be your prototypical exert creature it's two two for two but when you attack you can exert it and it becomes a 3-3 flyer until end of turn. So it can get in there, it can poke in, chip in for damage early, and then when your opponent drops a blocker, it can fly over the top for evasive damage. Last up, Cartouche of, of Ambition. Black is not one of the stronger colors in this format. I think it's probably the weakest, I want to say. Uh, but Cartouche of Ambition is a house. This is key for any control or mid-range deck to survive against an aggro exert deck. It puts a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Usually your opponent, even if they're avoiding the one toughness creatures, will still have a one toughness creature for you to take uh, for you to take out, or at least shrink something like a gust walker so it's not as big of a threat. And then it gives your creature lifelink and plus one, plus one. This usually can enable an attack, help you win a race, help you get ahead or stay alive another turn. So Cartouche of Ambition, very, very strong common. Would definitely first pick it. For the color ranking, I think white's going to be the best. It's aggressive. It's synergistic. It goes into every color uh, well. I think white blue is quite strong. White um, white red is very strong. White green is good. Uh, white black, if you can get a critical mass of zombies, is also quite good. It's more mid rangey, which sketches me out in this set. But uh, white, I think, is going to be not by far, but the best color. Up next, we have red again. Very aggressive exert creatures, cheap good removal, uh, goes into uh, obviously the white deck very well, goes into blue very well, red-green is a fine beatdown deck. The only deck I wouldn't choose to be in 
uh, would be red black but again if you get a bunch of good cards and rares and uncommons any deck is viable in this format next up we have blue uh, so there's good value creatures. Blue is kind of in the middle here. So it pairs well with green if you want to go mid-range or control. More control in the green version. But also with red, um, it can be a, an aggressive spells deck. In white, it can be a very evasive, recursive deck, mid-rangey. So uh, there's a lot of good evasive, evasive creatures. There's a control shell here. And then there's good value as well. Last, uh, next to last, we have green. This is slower, it's more controlling, but has a great top end built on a couple of strong uncommons, cards like Sifter Worm. A greater Sandworm is good at ending a game, but you have to be able to get there and survive. So uh, there are some good uh, defensive green creatures. It does have some exert as well, but its exert creatures tend to be more aggressive, so they don't mix and match as well. Something to watch out for. And last up, we have black. Black has really good instant speed removal. But it's just not very good at attacking, just kind of like uh, in Kaladesh. It's just not very good at attacking, and that's something that you really want to do in this format. So plan A in the draft, what are we looking for? We're looking to be aggro, okay? Again, we talked about cards like Gust, uh, Gust Walker. Starting nice, so that's white, red, or green. Um, uh, they all have good beatdown creatures. They all have good exert creatures. Um, and then it, they're also gonna, always going to give you those directions to go. Blue, as good as it is, and I think it's a very good color, tends to straddle that middle line and be more of a support color, but it's just a very, very good support color, depending on what you want to do. That's why I'd rather start green than uh, blue. You know, if I open a sifter worm, maybe I want to start with green blue. If I open in green, if I open something like a hooded brawler or some aggressive green creature that's good, then I'd want to start more green red or green white. And then have a plan. Kind of like Kaladesh, you're gonna to want to have a plan. The smushed Amonkhet and Hour of Devastation together, generally bringing in the more powerful synergistic cards. So you're gonna to want to have a game plan. Um you want to go all in on aggro. You want to be very controlling. You want to be, um, you want to have value and and be mid range, right? Uh, but you want to have a plan. If you're if you're going mid range, it's tough. You need to have the removal to survive, and you're gonna need to have something at the top end to turn the corner. So, best color is white. How do we pair it? What do we pair it with? Red and green. We're gonna talk through. Uh, cards like On Crop Crasher is a very strong uncommon that's gonna enable attacks. Uh, with green, Appeal to Authority is going to be a huge combat trick that can just win a game. Um, appeal gives you uh, gives your creature plus one, plus one, I think, for each other creature on the battlefield at instant speed. And that's just massive. Aerial Guide in blue. So this is going to be that evasive shell. It's going to allow your creatures to get over the top of an opponent uh, and finish them off. Uh, and then you're also going to get value. This is the Embalm Eternalized deck. So Vizier of the Anointed. This is going to be a little bit more mid-rangey, but you do have the ability to evade an opponent and get there. You don't have to get there on turn 5, but this uh, this colored pair can finish off your opponent turn 8, turn 10, uh, because you're also gaining life as well in this colored pair. Up next we have Black. This is going to be the Zombies deck. Uh, this is tough to get into. It's built around its uncommons, I think, uh, and then getting a critical mass of zombies, but we'll talk through that one as well wayward servant is a favorite of mine it's just a little drain zombie so first up it's going to be the exert aggro deck this is kind of the template of the set this is the deck you need to be watching out for it has cheap evasive exert creatures and it pairs removal and untap effects to win uh win the game uh, trial of solidarity being um first among them Honored Crop Captain is a beast uh so it's a three two for three whenever it attacks it pumps your team so Fantastic Uncommon. Nothing else to say about it. Just very, very basic. Dauntless Haven is kind of a good role player, and I know we talked about a one toughness creature is not being the best, but uh, this creature can untap your exerted creature. So if you have like a Taunt Crop Elite that gives your team plus one, plus one, you can swing with that, exert it, and Dauntless Haven. Use the Dauntless Haven to untap your Taunt Crop Elite every single turn. Good role player in this deck. And then Kenra Scrapper, I think, is another great common for this deck. It's a 3-2, or a 2-3 Menace for 3, which isn't great, but you can exert it and make it a 4-3, uh, and then it can trade up or 2-for-1 or your opponent. Uh, and then sometimes they just can't block it. Sometimes they don't have two creatures down, and you can just start getting in there. It also doesn't have one toughness, so it's a little bit more difficult to kill. It doesn't die to Magma Spray. Also very good. 
the exert fatty stack. So white green is exert and beat down. So you're going to use some tricks as well. Synchronized strike, I think, is very, very strong. Um, and again, untap effects like it's uncommon on crop champion. It's a four, 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 great stat line. And when it exerts, you untap all other creatures you control. So this is about taking huge swings, exerting everything, everything but the on crop champion untaps. Synchronized strike right here. You can exert two creatures, untap them, and give them plus two, plus two at instant speed for three mana. This is huge. It's also it also can be used defensively as well if you if you want to risk it. Um, and sometimes you have to in this format. It's very aggressive. Um, so you can do that as well. Lastly, just a strong two drop. Uh, Ronus is stalwart. This card goes perfectly in uh, the green. Uh, white exert beatdown deck it's two two for two uh you can exert it to make it a three three and then it can't be blocked by creatures power two or less so it's a little bit evasive as well and then it's just a strong card to play on turn two up next eternalize the eternalize embalm deck this is a little bit more mid-range but you're going to be able to evade your opponent and still get in there to kill them so you get a lot of value from your creatures because they come back from the yard um, you're getting a lot of value. Uh, you're getting a lot of evasive threats as well. Uh, led by Avon Wind Guide, this card is very, very strong. It's a 2-3 Flying Vigilance for 4, which is fine. But all of your creature tokens you control have Flying and Vigilance. Uh, so any Embalm or Eternalized creature, uh, what that is, is it comes back from the yard as a token. Uh, usually like a zombie token it comes back. So it gives everything that you Embalm or Eternalize a... Flying and Vigilance, which is really, really strong. Both are really, really strong keywords, both strong for evasion and for defense. Sun Scourge Champion, one of my favorite uncommons in this set to play, just uh, extends the game. You gain life, it comes back. So it's a 2 3 for 3 that gains you 2 when it enters the battlefield. So it avoids Magma Spray, which is good, it's key. And then it eternalizes for 4. You do have to discard a card, but usually you can pitch a land or something. Or you could pitch another uh, eternalized creature or embalm creature. That makes sense to me too um when you eternalize something it always comes back as a four four when you embalm something it comes back with its original power and toughness so this comes back as a four four that gains you four life ton of value off this card can help you survive and sustain uh and and live into the mid game and and win the race against those aggro exert decks Lastly, another great role player, another great common uh, that's very underrated, I think, is Anointer Priest. Two mana for a 1-3. Whenever a token ETBs under your control, you gain a life, and then it embalms for four. So uh, three toughness is very key in this format. A lot of the exert creatures start off with two power, and then they exert to become three power. So it forces them to exert to get in, and then they don't untap. So uh, that that can help extend the game as well or throw your opponent off um force them to use removal on this thing in which case it just comes back all right next up we have the zombies deck one of my favorites you need uncommons for this deck you're going to need a critical uh mass of zombies usually 10 plus zombies i would like to see for this so but if it's open it's very very good uh, and then it does have some evasion as well. Unconventional tactics is a common way to end the game if you're going to be in the zombie stack. It's three mana, gives a creature plus three, plus three, and flying until end of turn. And then ever a zombie ETBs, uh, you can pay a white to return this from the graveyard to your hand. Just keep using it over and over and over again as long as you keep those zombies coming. Um, very frustrating to play against this card. A uh, Binding Mummy is another frustrating card to play against if your opponent has the nuts zombie deck because whenever a zombie comes into play, you can tap an, art, tap an artifact or a creature to tap down your opponent's team. This allows you to get in. And then next up, we have Fanbear. Fanbear is another great common. This goes in any deck, I feel. Even an aggro exert deck has a place for, for a Fanbear in it. But it's a one, it's a one drop uh, with two toughness, and then you can tap creatures down. So um, just very strong as well. And it's a zombie. All right, so let's say you can't get in white. What's plan B? Survive, sustain, turn the corner. This is if you're not on that aggro beatdown plan. So cards like Edifice of Authority are going to help you do that. It's going to shut off attacks, and then eventually uh, when you get that third brick counter on there, it's going to shut down a creature for a whole turn. So I really like this card to help. Uh, it does take mana, which is you know something to think about, but uh, if you're going to do that controlling or mid-range game, sometimes you just you got to do it. And Edifice of, of Authority is kind of like serves as an icy manipulator in this format, if, if you're on defense. 
Sustain, Labyrinth Guardian, another one of my favorite cards in this form. And it's two mana for a 2-3, and then it embalms for four. So this really helps to shut down those aggro exert decks. It's a three toughness creature for two mana. It can hold the ground, and then it comes back. So it's very annoying for your opponent to play against, um, and that can help you survive. And then how are you going to turn the corner? We talked about Sifter Worm before, but it's a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler for seven. You can ramp this thing out, scry three, and then gain a bunch of life if you have other um, expensive cards in your deck that it reveals. Hopefully you're able to gain at least four life when it comes to play. I've definitely gone Sifter Worm, scry into another Sifter Worm, and that's pretty big game. All right, so pairing blue. We're going to talk through how to pair it with red. That's going to be the Prowess Spells deck, which I think is a lot of fun. It relies on cheap spells like Crash Through, Prowess Creatures, and then Incidental Damage. We'll talk through green and how that's going to work. Uh, green is going to be the control deck, but that's Survive, Sustain, Turn the Corner. Cards like Bitter Bow Sharpshooters help against not only the Exert decks, if you can ramp this thing out, but also against those Evasive Blue-White decks. And then they're, they're, they have Vigilance, so they can get in for damage as well. And then Blue-Black, that's going to be the Cycling deck. This is another really fun deck to, to get together, but you need those Cycling payoffs. So we'll talk about that and how to get value there. All right, so first up is Spells. This is built around Incidental Damage, Prowess. And there's a lot of overlap here with Cycling as well. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of Cycling cards, so you're going to be able to filter through your deck and find your, your most powerful spells. Uh, Enigma Drake. So it's a uh, 3-mana Flyer, star 4, so a lot of toughness, really good. And then it has power equal to the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard. So not only are you going to be casting a lot of spells to buff your power creature, uh, prowess creatures and stuff like that, but if you cycle, it still counts if you cycle your spells. Riddle Form is a very strong card. I think this um, was much stronger in its original format, but it still has a place here. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it becomes a 3-3 with flying, and it's 2 mana. Then you can pay 3 to scry. This is more of a late-game thing if you survive that long. But if you have instant speed spells like Magma Spray, you can kill one of your opponent's creatures with the Magma Spray, make this a 3-3, and try to 2-for-1 them. Kind of ambush them. Next is Firebrand Archer. A lot of games end due to this card. It does have one toughness, which can be a problem. But whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it deals one to each opponent. So this is uh, one of my favorite cards in Crimson Vow was Kessig Flame Breather, which was two mana for a 1-3 that had this ability. Um, and Firebrand Archer kind of fills the same role. It's a little bit better. Um, it's not as well statted for what it's trying to do, especially in this type of format where all the minus one, minus one counters are running around. But it's still very strong in the spells deck. Up next, we have Ramp. So Ramp and Sustain, uh, Value Creatures and Fatties. This is a pretty basic uh, standard archetype for blue-green. Uh, but you can see here, River Hoopo, it's 2-mana, 1-3 Flyer. But if you can Ramp, uh, you can start gaining life, drawing cards, and outpace your opponent, turn the corner, if you can find a way to survive early game. So it's good early as a blocker, and then good late. Uh, but don't be afraid to sacrifice your River Hoopo. Okay, if you drop this on turn 2, and it needs to block, just block with it. Up next, Oasis Ritualist. Uh, it's four mana for a 2-4, uh, but then it allows you to splash. It allows you to ramp into your fatties. Uh, we talked about, or, or we showed the two mana, one two ramper, which I would probably take over this, just because I'd rather ramp from two to four over four to six, if that makes sense. Next is cards like, uh, we talked through uh, Sifter Worm, but Greater Sandworm is the other fatty at common. So this card is going to be one of your finishers. You usually can pick these up. Uh, and then if you're desperate, you just cycle it away. Look for something better. Look for Try to hit your land drops. Try to hit something that's going to help you survive. But it does have cycling. And then if you draw it late, it's just going to end the game. The Cycling Discard deck, one of my favorites. Um, it's finicky, and you need the payoffs. And you need to draw them uh, in order, right? You need to draw your payoffs before your cyclers. So uh, you also you're going to need cheap removal to be able to survive the early game. So you have Shadowstorm Vizier here, uh, two mana for a one three. It's a flyer, so this does hold the ground pretty well as long as you can hold up a cycler. It becomes a two four. It can block a lot of exert creatures as flying, but it's good on defense early. And then of course it can chip in as well. Ominous Sphinx, one of my favorite air elemental uh, with upside here, five mana four four flyer. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, it can shrink creatures. Uh, again, you're trying to build up this board of payoffs. So every time you cycle, uh, it really messes with your opponent's attacks. 
and then Vile Manifestation, an, uh, a very cheap four toughness creature, has Cycling itself, itself, but you're going to end up with so many Cycling cards in your graveyard, this thing's going to be massive and out of control. It essentially reads, um, uh, is a 4-4 four, four by turn 4 sometimes, you know, so it becomes very huge. So what else? What else do we need to talk about with this format? Monuments. I think Oketra's Monument is amazing. This card is ridiculous. It's three mana, white creature spells you cast, cost one less to cast. And then whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one white warrior token with Vigilance. So we're talking about Battlefield Pumps with Trial of Solidarity. This card is a huge piece of any uh, heavy white deck um, because it makes your white creatures. But when it, 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 you don't have to cast a white creature spell to get the white uh, warrior token. Cast any creature spell and you get a little 1-1 one, one with Vigilance. So this card is amazing. Uh... I would probably first pick this, and there are definitely scenarios in which I would play this in a deck that didn't have any white cards. If I'm red, green, beat down, and I got a bunch of creatures, uh, I'm probably still going to play this card. This card's very, very good. Uh, but there's monuments in each color. I think the uh, white one is good, and I think the green one's pretty good. Ronus is monument, because that one buffs your creatures by plus two, plus two. Whenever we cast a creature spell, that's pretty good too. Up next is deserts. Deserts are huge. I think every deck should have... I, I try to aim for two or three, um, unless you're in like the most aggressive deck, uh, then you probably want just one or two. You don't want too many tap lands, but uh, it's, it's a land desert. There's a lot of desert payoffs, Sand Strangler being my favorite. Um, and then you can cycle them away. So these prevent flood. So cycling is a very good mechanic to either help you find land drops um, and uh, help you find your spells. And then with the deserts, they help you avoid flood, which is really, really good. Uh, they also count as cycling cards in the yard, um, if you have anything that cares about that. So, very, very good. I think you should pick these quite highly. Um, I wouldn't mind picking a desert third or fourth in a lot of cases, but I see these things wheel and they shouldn't. Next up, another the Desert Payoff Sacklands, cards like Ifnir Deadlands, is huge. Uh, so this is a desert. Um, it doesn't come into play tapped which is nice. And then you can sacrifice a desert. It doesn't have to be this one, but it can sack itself to put two minus one, minus one counters on target creature and opponent controls. There's a cycle of these, one in each color. I think all of them, excepting the blue one, are pretty good. I know the red one hits your opponent in the face for three. Um, I think the green one buffs your creatures. So there's uh, these are very, very strong. I think if near Deadlands probably being the strongest. So that's about going to wrap it up. For me, uh, that's Kaladesh and Amonkhet Remastered. We're going to get these two sets coming back to Arena right before we get Dominaria United. So I'm super excited for all that. All right. Thank you.